Hmm, hopefully this might be working. Okay. 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 Let's see. Alrighty. Just testing if anybody's here. Sorry, this computer was set up differently than my other one. <laughs> yes, that's my babies. They're not very well, bless their heart. They are crying because they're poorly. Uh, Charlotte, the littlest, has been poorly today. So, yes, apologies for that. Uh, I'm not sure they're adorable, Ben. I'm not sure adorable is necessarily the word. Uh, beautiful and lovely, but poorly is not good for them, bless their little hearts. Uh, so just let me quickly move that for my head. Um, Okie dokie. So I've got a couple of questions for you guys first. Uh, can you hear me okay would be a, um, would be a good one. <laughs> so if you can hear me okay, uh, then please let me know. Because uh, I do not want to be too loud or too quiet. And we'll go for that. Um yes yes and yes and yes and yes excellent that's good um now this computer set up a little, little differently than my uh one down down and um, there and i because i think my my wife set it up for doing my little boy to do some like minecraft streaming um so which is why i'm in a little teeny weeny box at the bottom and why the rest of the screen is black um i'm not exactly sure how to remedy that at the moment uh, so you might just get me being on, on, on a little black screen, but generally it'll be me talking about things. I'm just going to quickly bow onto my music player, Spotify, and just put some music across just to check that you can hear uh, music because I want to give you some kind of sound, uh, some sound examples and stuff just so you kind of know. So uh, just let me know if you can hear this. Be useful if I can hear it as well at some point. Uh, listening on this computer. <laughs> Can you hear that jazz? Well, swing, but yeah, here we go. Let me know. Can you hear it? it? Looks like it's coming through on the street, but I don't know. Yes, there we go. Excellent. Here's, you know, it is tunes. It's a karaoke version of The Way You Look Tonight by Frank Sinatra, so why the hell wouldn't we do that? Uh, okay. Ooh, so, folks, hopefully we're okay. Um, first thing to do is not worry about mock exam. Um, definitely don't worry about it. Um, there's a few things I want to go through with you um, this evening. The first thing is about the paper, and I've just realised that I've left my bag down in my study at the bottom of the garden, which has all my information in it. So I'm just going to quickly start Excel, um, which has my information about the mock exam, and then I'll just quickly uh, run to the bottom of the garden uh, in haste to get um, my uh, little bag. Um, sorry, I have got wine, because I need wine. Um, so... Blah blah blah. Keyframe. Keyframe. What the hell's a keyframe? Um. Sorry. It's um moaning at me to do with something to do with my uh, video setting. I'm just gonna leave it and let it do what it does. We'll see how it goes. Um. I'm not a bad influence, Charlotte. I'm not a bad influence. Not at all. Um. Okay. So I've got my Excel up. And I will just quickly load this up. Now, the first thing in the mock exam is the way they phrase the paper. Um, if you know how they phrase a paper and they know how they how they basically make the paper go, um, you can kind of prepare yourselves um, kind of for how it's going to go. Um, usually the first question, and this will be the case on Friday, the first question, if you've got a piece of paper, you might want to write some of this down as well. Um, you... Your first question is usually in three parts, and it's usually worth quite a lot of marks. Um, and it features music from both, from Aero Study 2, 3, and 4. 
and it's phrased as one question but actually it's three different questions okay they call it question one so that it only looks like you've got seven questions in the entire paper um, but actually it's three kind of three questions um, and it um, it kind of means that you must be prepared for a big question at the beginning and actually sometimes that can take a long time to get through that question um, and often you get multiple listens, probably three or four listens potentially to each of the extracts for each of those um, parts of the first uh, first question. So usually the first question um, is in three parts. Um, and again, just at some point, just again, I'm hoping you can still got, you can still hear me because you've not posted on that you can't hear me. So we'll we'll go with that. Um, what? Do you shower or watch? I don't know, Erin. I don't know. It's up. It's up to you. It's up to you what you want to do. Um, so, um, the first question is in three parts. Um, so, you will get something from Area Study 2, 3, and 4, but not necessarily in that order. Um, you will get things from all um, three areas of study. Obviously, Area of Study 1 is your instruments. So, you won't um, get... Um, well, yes. So, you won't get... Um, anything for area study one because that's your instrument so you won't get anything because obviously they don't know what everyone plays so area study two is called shared music and that's the one that kind of gamelan and jazz and classical music and pop ballads and leader and all that stuff come under then you've got area study three which is dance music so tango and salsa and and waltz and um all those kind of things and then you've got area study four which is very small in the cgp book but it's only um uh, descriptive music and film music um, but then you'll get as many questions in the paper on area study 4 as you will area of study 2 so the first thing to know is that you will definitely get questions on descriptive music and film music okay and in your mock based on my 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 kind of calculations you've got three three questions to do with area study 4 you've got three questions to do with area study 2 and you've also got three questions area of study 3 now there's officially seven questions um, but there is also the question one is in three parts okay so you've actually got nine questions okay of which each area study two three and four each have three uh, questions for uh, so you want to make sure uh, that you're spending as much time on area study four and list again and listening to things like film music um, so that you can make sure because you're going to get as many questions on that so it may be that something like gamelan doesn't even come up in the paper you don't know it will okay because you'll get three questions and you only get three of the maybe 15 different styles in area study two but you'll get three questions on descriptive music and film music so you're definitely going to get some film music so you're definitely going to make sure that you go through area study four to listen to that stuff and not just film music descriptive music and what's called program music is different from that okay now i'm just going to quickly go and grab my bag okay so you're currently at the moment going to see a few seconds of nothing okay so you'll just see me run out of the door and run back again so you've got about about 20 seconds i'll be back with you okay see you in a sec Hello again. <laughs> I've I've run. Oh, I didn't run. That's a lie. I walked relatively relatively fast. Whew. Okay. So um, so we talked. That's just the past the paper bit done. Okay, and we'll mo we'll move on now. Um, now that I'm in the swing of things. Um, so. I said I would I'm just going to bring up um, Edmodo on the tablet so I make sure I get all my notes and everything. Um, you want to make sure that you are um, reading your CGP book, but you want to make sure you're re listening to music. And I'm just going to, while I look at this, going to give you a little bit of film music just to kind of give you an idea of the kind of stuff you might get. 
Um, okay. So. Now, if you've got anything like Spotify, you just want to go in and play some play some mute play some film music yeah and then see if you can go through and pick out instruments pick out cadences pick out they just to be able to pick stuff out okay um yeah uh, exam boards ocr amy so you can look for past papers you won't necessarily have to get the music but we actually have some and i'm going to be uploading them on edmodo so once we've got coursework deadlines through you're going to have stuff uploaded on um on edmodo so on edmodo so don't fret too much about that so just have a listen to this um and we'll we'll go with this get you another one Charlotte we can get you another CGP we've got a few spare ones Yeah, we can. I will be making a revision playlist on Spotify, so I've already I've got one from a couple of years ago, so I'll, I'll update that, Charlotte. That's fine. Okay, I'm just quickly bobbing an Edmodo, and then we'll kind of go. So, so the idea with that question there, um, I could really do with some headphones. But everything's disappeared at the moment. Um, the idea with that question there, um, it's not even the question, but that piece of music would be you'd you'd pick up on things like um, it's it's film music so you ask them like for example this is this is a section from the film gladiator it's by hans zimmer um you want to know some composer of film music names so hans zimmer howard shaw uh, john williams howard shaw did all the hobbit films and stuff john williams has done star wars and indiana jones and loads of stuff hans zimmer's done pirates of the caribbean and inception and and gladiator and all sorts of stuff so you, again any kind of film composer name you'll be okay as long as you know some don't put Beethoven on Mozart or anything you know because that's just not going to work um, so you want to have a few names of those kind of film composers but they won't just ask you about film music they're going to ask you theoretical music stuff so like what's the time signature okay like what's the time signature they might even ask you about tempo they may ask you to comment on the um, they might ask you to comment, for example, um, on like the use of brass. Okay, so if we listen to if we listen to kind of that, and they might say, "What's what's the brass doing in this in this extract?" Might comment on dynamics. They might say, "Okay, well the brass is kind of get the idea that you might even focus on percussion." And it might ask you questions on comparing and contrasting things, which has nothing to specifically do with film music. So you will get a question on film music, but it won't necessarily be your knowledge of film music, which will get you the marks. It might be knowledge of film music, knowing that there's certain things that film music does, or knowing the instruments that you might have in, in leader or something like that in Area Study 2. But it's as well the stuff of, can you pinpoint those musical things happening? Um, so the first thing is to make sure that you are um, understanding that you want to use your CGP to revise, but you don't want to necessarily think that the, if you learn every word in the CGP, you might get 50% in the listening test. Okay? Because only about maybe maximum 50% will actually be specifically things to do with those areas, areas of study. Some of them will be, but some of them will be to do with listening to the music and pinpointing what's happening. Um, so it's important that you listen to these styles of music and we'll get a playlist sorted um, and, and and make sure that we're kind of we're kind of doing that. Um the first thing I want to go through uh, in my timetable is club dance. Um, so we're actually going to focus on club dance. It's a section, it's thing that you will generally have heard before, um, but you might not. Um, we haven't necessarily gone through it in the CGP. Now the CGP doesn't say huge amounts. The thing about club dance is its use of technology as well. Um, so when you look at stuff like club dance, um, the fact that it uses technology is the thing that they're always they'll always ask you questions because it's the only real 
um, style of music, apart from disco with using synthesizers, um, where they'll really ask you stuff about technology. Yeah, they can't do that in classical music. So club dance, they're going to ask you kind of some questions to do with tech. So computers and technology and sampling and and those kind of things. So in the CGP, it talks about some of the styles of club dance. Club dance isn't one style of music, as you all will know. Okay, um, so. It has, again, the CGP says house and techno and draw jungle and drum bass, UK garage, trance, ambient, rave. But there is, there's a lot more. There is a huge amount of different types of club dance. It's not that you'll necessarily be required to set, tell them what type of club dance, but they will all have similarities in that they're going to potentially have synthesized drum beats. They're going to potentially have computer and synthesized music within it. Okay, so the idea of you've got synths in there. So the word synth, S-Y-N-T-H, -S is again useful to know. Um, starts off 1980s, 1990s. It says here that it started in Chicago. Now, dance, club dance music probably started across the world, but they're saying Chicago. Don't disagree with the people who did the exam. Okay. Now, I, I, I once had a stu I once had a student who thought they knew better and kind of pointed out that, well, actually, officially, that's not actually correct and the study guide is wrong. The examiner doesn't care whether the student thinks they know. Whatever the answers is, is the answers. So if they say it started in Chicago, it started in Chicago. Okay. Um, so, again, it says there, Frankie Knuckles, um, you know, and then you know, there, there was a club called The House, which is where the idea of house music comes from. And I'm just going to play a little bit of kind of um, old style kind of music. Uh, this is um, something, again, a band that's still kind of around uh, around at the moment called The Prodigy. Um, the Prodigy, when I was growing up, and I still love them now, but they're kind of my childhood memory. So apologies if you don't like The Prodigy. Um they went into some quite kind of they started using guitars later on but their first album stuff was kind of kind of rave i suppose you'd call it rave music um from that i was too young to go to any raves um but you kind of get the idea there was again sampling so taking so songs um taking samples from songs uh, and then kind of remixes yes yeah? so the idea of remixes and taking samples from songs and then adding new synthesized drum beats two things like that um so how listen to this one great song great song this is the prodigy and out of space so when you listen to this stuff you just need to kind of know that it's sampling and stuff like that and you also need to one second to plug my headphones in um, headphones on so I can listen to the music at the same time. So I won't play too much of that. Uh, it, Charlotte, it's not just rave music wasn't, well I suppose actually probably was just about taking drugs, but the music was very important. Um, it's very high energy, it makes want people want to dance. Um, again, you'd be expected to be able to pick up on tempo, so that was like quick yeah kind of 140 160 beats a minute plus there's going to be a clock in the exam so you can look at a clock a clock goes at 60 beats a minute so we all we said this previously that you can work out what the tempo is if it's as fast as a clock it's 60 beats a minute that's like adagio yeah club dance not surprising doesn't use italian terminology to describe it. it's it's tempo you use bpm yeah beats per minute if it's twice as fast as the clock it's 120 if it's three times as fast that's really fast that's 180 that's kind of like presto um so if you if you've got like that 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 it's about 140 okay so kind of different styles of music will have uh, different tempos for example drum and bass um has is often about 160 170 um so for example if i just give you a quick bit of uh some chase and status uh okay Now this is relatively new club dance, but this is drum and bass, but again with guitars and plan B in it, because why not? Now at the moment, okay, so that's your tempo at the moment, okay? Not particularly quick, okay? 
And at the moment, if you're picking up on this, and this was club dance, you'd be picking up on guitar, there's a man's voice, there's some synthesized kind of stuff in the background, you've got some synthesizers going on, you've got backing harmonies there coming in, okay? Um, and this is obviously the beginning of a dance piece. I love this song. Um, now this is the bit, or even dance music has the quiet bit before it starts going crazy, okay? So the bit that kind of goes a bit crazy, um, yeah, this is club dance, yeah? But you'll know why it's club dance, Amy, because in a minute it kicks off. At the moment, it's kind of not, okay? But you might get the quiet bit of a song before it kicks off. But at this point here, this is when the crowd would put their hands in the air and get ready to dance. And we're quicker. Yeah. We're a lot quicker now. So this is when your crowd starts getting busy and jumping around and bouncing. And then, and then you've got what's called the drop, which is now. That's drum and bass, okay? A lot of dance music has what's called a drop, okay? And you'll know this, if you're in a, if you're in a club, you get to that point and you, it'll be, you know, the hands in the air and then bang, and the drop comes and you're, you're, you're jumping around and enjoying yourself. Oh, thank you very much. My wife made me a cup of tea. Um, you drinking wine? Well, wine and tea, they go well together. Um, um, I'm not sure quite what madness is, but yeah, I mean, I, I once got, um, I once, jumped while I was dancing at a Chasing Status gig into a bouncer uh, who thought I was trying to have a fight with him and got thrown out. Uh, they let me back in again because I explained that I'm not a violent and aggressive person but I was dancing around and tripped over my own foot and fell into a bouncer. You can imagine how that went with three bouncers throwing me out of a door. Um, yes, my wife does have bants. Um, indeed she does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so that's again that's drum and bass the only thing you need to know about club dance is really just picking up um on the fact that it's kind of it's kind of like raves and kind of like dancing the dancing it's not you don't dance in pairs okay some of the dances like tango and waltz you're, you're dancing in closed position in pairs but really club dance is about not about dancing with another person you're not going to have a slow dance to, to that piece you're not going to kind of like yes yeah, do you want to go for a dance there's a great song on now yeah it's not going to work um so um so that's kind of club dance i'm only going through it very kind of quickly just because um it's kind of a useful thing to kind of go through and make sure we're focusing on um now the next thing I said I was going to go on to, so I'm jumping off club dance, just make sure you kind of get the keywords there and you kind of know that it could be any kind of style of music that um, kind of any, there's lots of different styles that are called club dance. They're not all, there's not just one piece called club dance. It could be like Calvin Harris, it could be drum and bass, it could be even kind of really kind of cheesy, like properly like cheesy stuff. Um, uh, let me think. Um... Let me just play you one more thing. This, for example, would be club dance um, as well. Uh, so you got your standard kind of beat. Now, a lot of dance music, club dance, on the actual tracks have lots of nothing happening at the beginning. Okay? The reason is because DJs would mix it together. So they'd need the first 30 seconds of a song to just be the beat. So they could mix the beat from one song to the next song before. So yeah. I'll just have to get to the chorus. So this is a lot slower. Three. Yeah, now that is obviously 90s club dance. Very different, but again, it might give you two cl clips of dance music and ask you to compare and contrast the tempos or the styles or the vocals in those things. So again, you need to know about club dance, but you need to be able to work out the tempo. That And a lot of club dance, four on the floor, yeah, four, four kind of stuff all right um so um 
yes so moving on um i'm jumping from the sublime not the ridiculous but to indian classical music okay indian classical music um now indian classical music again in the cgp it does have a couple of pages um indian classical music is all in its entirety about the keywords okay um it's completely really about about the keywords all right um in the CGP, you've got three pages of information. They only give you a page on club dance. They give you three pages on Indian classical. Um, because there's a lot of keywords. And it's not necessarily a type of music that you're used to listening to. Um, whereas, obviously, club dance, they expect you to probably have heard some of these styles of music before. With the Indian classical, there's a lot that you won't have heard before. Um, so let me just play you... You won't really struggle to pick it out, if you know what I mean. You're not going to struggle to to kind of think, oh, is this Indian club, Indian classical music? I don't really know. Okay, ha have have a, have a listen. This is uh, a piece of Indian classical music. So, um, Indian classical music, if you hear that, it's not difficult to work out that it's Indian classical music. I don't think you'd necessarily go, oh yes, that's, that's leader, that's club dance. I'm waiting for the drop. It's not going to happen. Um, it's important to get your instruments, okay, with that, and to just learn your keywords, okay? Yes, I, yes, no, I'm bread and tikka masala, I can see there, yes. Um... <laughs> <laughs> I'm hungry myself. Um, so you need to know your instruments. So things like sitar and the tambura and the tabla. Um, so the, the kind of different instruments. You need to know that Indian classical music is based on ragas. Uh, you need to know that the main uh, the, the main rhythm is played on a tabla, um, but also can be played on the on the tambura, um, and that the rhythm is called the tala. Okay. Um, and there's different kind of things that happen and you need to know about the kind of the melody um but really that's a pretty simple it's a pretty simple go through go through look at the things that are underlined learn those um learn those words okay um it gives you pretty much all the words you need so again the third page of that on page 24 of the cgp goes through and says the typical raga has four sections and then there's the lap and the jaw and the jar and the gap or the bandish etc etc and it tells you what happens the likelihood is that they're going to play you a piece of music that basically does exactly what they say it should do okay uh, but you then basically just need to know what it's doing okay um so let me just quickly check the um check some information here um so yeah it's gonna want the names of instruments it's gonna want the names of things like that so you just need to make sure that you learn those instruments um they'll probably ask you slightly less musical questions it's not like indian classical music is going to be able to pick out a perfect cadence because again it's not based on the same kind of musical scales as western classical music um so you don't need to necessarily worry about that that's gonna be what they're not going to say okay let's do a melodic dictation can you write down the notes that sitar is playing here they're, they're not going to do that okay um so it's really if you get indian classical music it's about keywords if you get gamelan it's about keywords okay uh, and getting the names of the instruments and getting the roles of those instruments and knowing generally how the music works um a lot of the time uh, and i know a few a couple of years ago um there was an exam where and it was a gamelan question you could answer all the questions on the question to do with gamelan without listening to the piece of gamelan because it was all just general knowledge about gamelan okay there was actually 
you didn't have to listen to the piece of gamelan um, because it was all, for example, like where's the music, where is this style of music from? So as soon as you knew it was gamelan, that was it. You, every single other question could be answered just with your knowledge from the CGP and your knowledge of the revision of keywords. So it's some styles of music are less to do with listening and more to do with the revision guide. Indian classical music is probably a combination because they'll want to get you to pick out what the instruments are. Um, but again, gamelan is 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 more about um, uh, more about kind of picking out. Uh, just leaving a message here. Ben Davis, can they do that with other styles? Melodic dictation. Uh, yeah, the most mm, the most likely one for melodic dictation is um, any type of classical music. Okay, so classical concerto or classical chamber music, or like give you a string quartet or something, and say, can you write down the melody that the um, the violin is playing? And it will give you a bit of, it'll give you the score before and after. It'll give you the rhythm and stuff like that, and then you've just got to fill those notes in. That's something we're going to have a practice of after this. So it's not something that some of you will be fine because you'll be used to kind of listening and using your kind of ear, kind of oral skills as far as your uh, like instrumental exams and stuff like that or you've got to sight sing and stuff like that and you can work out where a tune's going um what kind of range they usually do treble clef they usually do treble clef and they usually don't move much more than about uh, half an octave maybe maybe a perfect fifth kind of five notes up and down um usually it's in sequence and in simple jump so if you do a melodic dictation you usually um would have things either that are in scales but potentially might jump by a third or a fifth if you're if you're unlucky it might jump by an octave but that's pretty easy so if i was gonna sing you might get a tune of like da -na 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 -na. so you go da -na -na, scale na -na -na, that's a third na -na 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 -na. and there's that so it won't be like na -na -na -ha 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 -ha. it's not going to give you like a jazz melodic dictation where you get some like really difficult kind of blue notes and jazz notes and chromatic stuff um, a level music has that stuff and it's quite tricky but for gcse it's relatively simple scales uh not a problem but i'm just seeing so thank you um so indian classical music you just want to go through and look in there and just write some uh, little cue cards and just learn some of the words okay and again test each other you've got a lesson um some of you again i know some of you in mock exam tomorrow uh, but there is there is some lessons going on um and you've got some time before for the end of friday just to look through and just to say okay i'm going to look through and just practice some of those words okay and just get some of those words um so next uh, we've talked about film music um as in you need to know about it but i'm just going to quickly go to the cgp and just give you um oh you're all in that exam okay not to not to worry but you still we've still got some time for you to be able to before friday afternoon for you to kind of get through and have a look at some of these keywords and again remembering that the mock this is um this is a mock exam i'm using it for baseline testing and i'm using it for the stuff that we've done before and that we've covered in more detail um are we remembering that stuff or do we need to revisit and the stuff that we've not covered it'll be interesting as how much stuff that you can get of things we've not covered as much by just using those those literally listening skills because some of the key some of the stuff doesn't require keyword knowledge it just requires you to be able to listen and go okay okay this is a major key it's a perfect cadence it sounds like a full stop or this is what this instrument does you don't need kind of genre specific information uh so film music um we listen to film music at the beginning. A lot of the time, film music obviously is to do with describing something. So they might give you questions to do with stuff like, okay, this is this section of music is describing, you know, describing a, 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 a battle. Okay, what is it about the describe? What is it in the music that, that uh, is is makes it sound like a battle? So you might say, okay, well, there's brass instruments playing quite high, like 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 sound like kind of like high kind of uh kind of triumphant brass you might say kind of like some kind of military kind of style snare drum or something so it'll want you to kind of say why is the music sounding the way it does so why has a composer done certain things to make it sound a certain way so if they say this is a piece of music to describe like a rocket taking off into space or something yeah then they would want you to identify potentially why what is it what's the composer done to make it sound like that and it may be if the rocket's taking off it may be you get something like at some kind of ascending scales 
okay you're certainly probably not going to get diddle little 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 because that's going down so there might be some ascending kind of scales or arpeggio so bum 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 ba -da -bum, bum yeah so stuff that going up it might be again sound triumphant and heroic because obviously rockets taking off are kind of like wow it's a rocket taking off um so they're going to want you to describe things yeah um it may also give you two sections from a film and get you to compare, again, compare and contrast the use of instruments or the use of dynamics or, again, the speed or tempo or rhythms in there. So it might be that you say, oh, there's kind of certain types of rhythms going on in this section, then the, this section is smoother and slower okay, and calmer. Okay. Um, so all that kind of stuff. So it's really the film music stuff. Again, you need to know your keywords. Um, but again, it's more um, about you being able to kind of pick up on um, what it's describing, okay? Um, so within, um, there's a couple of pages, there's three pages in the CGP, um, oh, four pages actually, um, but it gives you some keywords, but at the same point, if you listen to a piece of film music, it's often wanting you to describe things and saying what happens here, what happens there. Um, just let me have a look at this question, and I will just go through this. Okay. <laughs> yeah, covered that. Uh, yep, 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 yep. Now, there is a, um, what's called an, it's an extended writing answer um, in the exam. And the extended writing answer, basically, um, it will ask you a question, and normally it's to do with descriptive music, okay? Um, and it will basically say, uh, this piece of music, it'll probably give you either the name or what the piece of music is trying to convey. Um, and it will then say, it describe um, using full sentences, etc., etc. And it might say, okay you need to write a paragraph using sentences explaining how the music conveys the emotion that it's supposed to be conveying and you will therefore uh, write down say okay it does this by you know the, the beginning there are the instruments are quiet and there's there's flutes playing kind of a high pitched notes you know but but kind of calm and high pitched and then then the strings come in at a lower register and then it kind of gets louder and then it speeds up and that so literally it's a description description of what you are hearing as you are hearing it and basically saying this is what it's doing okay the music is composed specifically to do this and the instruments and the tempo and the dynamics and the texture and any other, and it always says any other features that are relevant so you can decide what's relevant but obviously the examiner might not agree so if it says things like instruments rhythm melody texture tempo and then and any other relevant information relevant things then that gives there will be a few um an examiner does have things like on their mark scheme like any other um uh, appropriate answer on the mark scheme uh, at which point if the if the if the marker thinks it's appropriate which is me uh, in, in the mock exam then they can give you a mark but I'm not going to be too friendly because the examiners won't know you and they won't know what you mean you have to just explain what you hear uh, which is why you want to pick some pieces of descriptive or film music and actually go through and see if you can actually describe what's happening and then talking about the instruments and the rhythm and, and, and stuff like that um, so that's uh, that kind of question let me just check the the other bits and bobs in here and then we'll move on to the next section um yeah identification of instruments uh, you'll need to do in probably a few different questions okay and that's not specifically for descriptive music you'll have to identify instruments so generally knowing what a string instrument sounds like or knowing what a brass instrument sounds like or knowing like what a flute sounds like or knowing what a clarinet sounds like okay um if you don't then there's there's playlists of these things of like identification but i we've we've done some stuff for that and we've listened and we've done some identification but you just need to make sure that you know um you can identify for example it might say what instruments play in the melody in this in this extract and you might listen to it and go it's a brass instrument it's quite high uh, it's probably a trumpet okay or it's a brass instrument it's quite low uh, it might be a trombone or a horn okay sometimes they will give a little bit of leeway um 
but at the same point you need to just kind of know what some of these things sound like and we've listened to a lot of them anyway um and again usually that's going to be in the area study two or area study three uh, area study two question to do with classical and stuff like that and like leader and those things the more western classical styles of which descriptive music and film music are one um as opposed to things like uh gamelan and Hindu classical music they might say what instruments are heard are used in this style of music but sometimes um sometimes they won't expect you to know exactly what instruments playing a melody especially in gamelan uh, in Gamelan, they'll accept pretty much any name of any instrument because they kind of know that you're not going to be able to pick out individual instruments. Partially because in Gamelan, there is no real melody. There is a melody and then a melody on top of the melody and, and every part is as important as the other parts, etc. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, Charlotte Doherty, cello and violin. Um, a cello is lower. So in, in string instruments, you've got the violins up there. You've again got a viola a little bit down. You've got the cellos quite a bit down. You've got the basses, which are really, really low. Okay. Um, a cello often sounds a bit warmer. Um, a cello can play quite high. But you kind of know violin when you hear it because it's the highest string instrument. A cello generally is just a little bit warmer and potentially a little bit more. You often use a cello for kind of a bit more, a bit more kind of either mournful and sad or kind of powerful stuff. So, and again, a lot of the time it might be a whole string section. So you might get violins, viola, cellos, and basses. So therefore, you could call them generally strings. So it might be that there's a section of things playing, and that you call them strings. If it talks about one individual instrument that plays a melody, you wouldn't get a mark for strings. You'd have to kind of go, okay, well, it's a string instrument. It's not a v it's not a violin. It's not high enough for that. It's quite low. Yeah, it's probably a cello. So then you'd 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 do that. Um, so yes, hopefully that answer that's question. Um, Moving on, um, other things. Um, there are some multiple choice questions, which is a good thing. Um, there are some multiple choice questions in all the exams that you get. Um, sometimes you'll get, for example, which of the following statements is true? Okay, and it might say, which of the following statements is true? The music in this extract is homophonic, heterophonic, polyphonic, monophonic. Okay, you'll listen to it. Um, you need to know what those words mean. OK, um, in the simplest form, monophonic means one thing playing, OK, um, like a solo voice. So me singing on my own would be mono, one phonic sound, one sound. Um, if there were lots of people all singing exactly the same thing, that would also be monophonic, OK, because they're all singing exactly the same thing. Um, uh, homophonic. Okay, homophonic um, is where often can be called tune and accompaniment. So that's where you might have um, instruments or things playing generally in chords and potentially with a melody on top. Okay, a lot of music is homophonic. Okay, so a pop ballad, for example, would be considered homophonic. Okay, because everything's following a chord pattern, like your compositions generally follow a chord pattern, like so, and then there'll be a melody going over the top of that chord pattern that's called tune and accompaniment uh, but again the official word for that is homophonic okay um, the only real style of music that is heterophonic is gamelan heterophonic is where you've got uh, a melody line okay and then you've got a more complicated more kind of fiddly melody line on top so they're the same tune but one is like an ornamented version of the other Okay, that's heterophonic. The only real piece of music that we we study that's heterophonic is gamelan. Okay, uh, um, unless they pull a fast one and do something else, but generally gamelan's heterophonic um, uh, piece of music. Polyphonic is, as I term it, musical spaghetti. Okay, uh, leader, yeah, leader is homophonic. Charlotte Doherty, yes, leader is homophonic. Uh, so again, piano and voice, that's that's homophonic. Um, so polyphonic. Um, is where I call it musical, musical spaghetti. So that means that the lines don't necessarily move in chords together, okay? They kind of interweave and they're independent parts. Um, I love it. Yes, Charlotte, you definitely got that right, Charlotte Doherty. Um, so, for example, um, some of the music of Bach. Bach was quite well known for um, his uh, things which are called fugues. Now, a fugue is a type of polyphonic music. OK, so just have a listen to this uh, and you'll kind of get what I mean.
So at the moment, that's kind of homophonic. They're kind of generally following that kind of, you know, that kind of, uh, kind of they're all kind of following that kind of chordal progression. Um, if you go forwards in this, in fact, that's not a great example. Uh, let me find an example that's better. Try this one. Oh no, that's completely wrong. Anyway, my Spotify is playing, it's been quite slow. Um, so polyphonic, basically, you have one thing that has a, a melody, something else which kind of moves independently of. They don't move in chords together. And it's not tune and accompaniment. It's like lots of individual tunes that all overlap and intertwine and kind of go above and below and kind of within each other. Um, again, polyphonic isn't too difficult to identify um, and you might get that in the Baroque and classical chamber music. Baroque music is more polyphonic uh, than it was in classical. Classical period was more homophonic, um, so like Mozart is more homophonic than something like Vivaldi for example. Um, again I'm generalizing there but I'm just kind of letting you know the kind of stuff you might get. Um, so um, next section because I want to make sure I get everything done and then have a chance for more questions oh by the way yes page 62 is also my favorite of the um, CGP guide uh, I'm sorry to tell you that there probably won't be any questions uh, to do with page 62 um, I know that Ben uh, Ben Davis is a um, expert in page 62 he's very good at that um, uh, so Hopefully you can still all, you can still all see me. Um, okay, so next um, classical. Uh, no, they don't cover prog rock. I don't think they cover prog rock at all. Ben, my, 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 I'm sorry. Um, the uh, uh, OCR don't think that's really a, a valid type of music. Uh, I think you need to probably kind of yeah. Ask some questions of your musical taste, maybe, and listen to some more gamelan. Listen to some more gamelan. That would be probably a good idea. Um, <laughs> definitely not. Uh, so, uh, classical chamber music. I just want to focus again on classical chamber music. Now, in classical um, chamber music, uh, you've got a few questions on. You've got a few pages in the CGP on that. Um, classical chamber music. In the CGP guide talks about major and minor scales. I don't really think I need to go through major and minor scales. Um, obviously, music is major and, and minor in the Baroque, uh, Baroque and Classical era. Previous to the Baroque and Classical era, you didn't have major and minor. You had modes um, in the Renaissance era, but they don't have any questions really on the Renaissance era properly. Um, apart from you might get it in great, I don't think you can get it in great choral classics. But really, major and minor um, in Baroque choral classic, Baroque and classical chamber music. Um, Obviously, Baroque was the style of music before the classical period. They might want you to know the periods in time. So Baroque is 1600 to 1750. Classical is 1750 to 1820. Pfft, done. Learn a couple of dates. You'll be fine. Um, you want to know the name of a couple of composers. So if it's kind of string music um, and it's kind of sounds kind of baroque -y, yeah, because again in Baroque you get a harpsichord and we've done this when we had uh, Rachel Leach, I think it was, in those um, London Symphony Orchestra videos. Again, and on Edmodo you've still got the links to those um, those uh, videos. Um, but again, you can find them on YouTube as well. But it went through obviously what is kind of Baroque music, so the idea of harpsichord and the idea of the continuo, so the harpsichord and the kind of well cello stroke bass um, playing the kind of general kind of mapping out the chords and the instruments on top of that. The fact that uh, Baroque orchestras are smaller, there's not as many players. Um, yes, sassy Rachel, she was right, she was very sassy. Um, I'd love to meet her in real life, I'm sure she's even sassier in real life. Um, slightly probably would slightly scare me, but then you know, talented people do scare me. Uh, I'm intimidated by talent. Um, so, yeah, so Baroque orchestras are smaller. 
um, classical orchestras get a little bit larger. If you hear a clarinet, or what you think is a clarinet, it's not Baroque. Clarinet didn't exist in the Baroque era. Um, if you hear really, really high kind of playing kind of brass instruments, you, you might be in the Baroque era. They use a lot of very, very high brass um, in the Baroque era. Again, if it sounds polyphonic, it's liable to be Baroque. If, you, if it's homophonic, it might be Baroque, but again, probably slightly more likely to be classical. Again, really generalizing here, but I know you kind of I'm trying to help you out a little bit. Uh, you need to know your forms. So, for example, things like uh, binary form. So A and then B, a section A, section B. And we went through this with a Mozart, uh, a Mozart concerto. I think we did. Um, I think we did piano concerto number twenty-three in A major. I think we did. I'm just going to quickly find a little bit of that just to remind you. Uh, piano twenty-three. One of my favourite pieces of music ever is the Adagio from from that. Uh, I think it's one of the most beautiful things ever composed. Uh... Yes, a, har a harpsichord is Baroque. Yes. So this is Mozart, okay? This is Mozart's Piano Concerto number 23. Okay, we've listened to this before. And this is Adagio, because it's slow. It's in 3-4, and then the orchestra comes in. So that's the second movement um, from Mozart's Piano Concerto 23 in A major. And interesting enough, that is in um, F sharp minor, because it's in the relative minor um, of A major. Um, so you need to know your form. So, for example, that piece is ternary. We, we studied this a, a while ago at the beginning of the year, and that was ternary. So an A, a, a say section, a B section, A section. Binary being A, B. A lot of Baroque music was binary. Um, so an A, section A, section B, and then they'd repeat the section A and section B. So A, B. Uh, rondo form is a kind of classical invention. Rondo being a section A, and then a section B, then a section A, a section C, and then a section A. Okay, so a repeating A section, which is the main theme, and then you have a couple of contrasting episodes, um, which is what they're called. Um, also, looking through there and things like theme and variation. So theme and variation, where you have a theme and then there's different variations to it. A, the probably, and this isn't necessarily Baroque and classical, but the most simple one I can think is Elgar. Edward Elgar did a piece of music called the Enigma Variations. Uh, so there's lots of variations on uh, kind of on a melody. So you have a melody and you have different pieces of music based on that melody. So you've got theme and variation. Um, you just need to bob through and have a look at some of those keywords. So understanding some of the stuff like imitation and, and ostinato. Ostinato being that kind of short, repeating kind of motif um, and a kind of a, a same, the similar kind of pattern. Um, so yeah, so sometimes it often can be arpeggioic. So you know, um, like bum 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 bum. That might be your ostinato. That therefore, as the chord changes, that that ostinato would still be there. Okay. Um, uh, yes, it's my cat. I've shut the door, so the cat's trying to get out. Um, I'm just going to open the door so they can get out of the way. So I don't want to. I don't want her uh, uh, getting annoyed. One second. Go on then, Rosie. Go on. Go on. Out you go. See you later. There we go. Okay. Um. Cats all out now. Um, yeah, Rosie. Rosie and Jake. 
brother and sister, a tabby and a ginger. They're both rubbish cats. Both very scared of me. Um, so, um, yeah, so ostinato, as the chord changes, the ostinato, the, the gap between the notes will be the same. So you might get bum, 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 dum, 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 Okay, so the ostinato is the same kind of rhythm, the same kind of pattern. But as the chord changes, then the, the kind of ostinato changes to fit the notes of that chord. And a lot of your compositions already do that. So you should be okay there. But it's called, again, ostinato. Um, so, um, some other bits and bobs on Baroque and Classical. Um, you want to make sure you know things like um, some of the names of some of the what's called ornamentation. So things like a trill, which is like... Diddle 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 ding. Yeah, those kind of little things that was called trills. Um, um, what's things that are called appoggiaturas, and it says appoggiaturas clash with the chord. You don't need to uh, you don't need to worry too much, but it might be badam. Okay, so badam instead of dam, which would be bam 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 bam. Your appoggiatura might go dam. Okay, so it initially clashes and then resolves. Okay, so it forms a little little suspension that goes diddy and then uh, resolves itself. Um, um, so again, look through your CGP on that. It won't necessarily want a big description of what these things do, but it might literally say what is that what happens. It might you might have a little section of score which might give you the melody without the appoggiatura and might say what happens at this point so you'd pick up that actually it goes down da -da, like that instead of dam dam and you'd then go oh okay that's an appoggiatura hey i got an, i got a mark um other things like passing notes so um and again we've been doing this in composition the idea that when you have a uh, one note moving up a, a few notes to another one you might get bum 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 but if you have a passing note, instead of going bam bam, you go ba da 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 da. That'd be passing notes to get between the different notes. The passing notes are not officially part of the chord. So if you had a chord of C, C, E, and G, and your melody went bam bam, okay, your passing note would go ba da da. So that that D, that that second note D, would not be officially in the chord of C because the triad of C is C E G, but then that would be a passing note. Okay, um, so the passing note would be part of the scale of C, but it wouldn't be part of the chord of C, which is a triad of C E G. And again, that's all going back to Year Ten stuff where we looked at a triad is one, three, and five, and making sure a major triad is four semitones, three semitones, and then a minor triad is three semitones, four semitones. Oh, hello, hello, Jacob. How are you doing, mate? Um, I know you didn't do GCSE music, Jacob, but you are doing Year 13 music tech now, so I'm not really sure if you need to be watching a GCSE music tutorial. But it's good that you're here, mate. It's good that you're here. Um, good to see you. Well, good to see your, that you're here. Um, okay, uh, next. So, rock and classical chamber music, you just need to make sure that you get a little bit of the fact if you know what you're listening for. That's the one where you're more likely to get melodic dictation. You're more likely to um, you're more likely to get things to do with chords and cadences uh, on on classical music questions. Okay, so you want to make sure that you know your keywords, but you're also kind of they're the ones where you're going to have quite a lot of listening stuff to do to do with what's happening within the instrumentation there. And again, a lot of the time, those rock and classical is. It's either small instrumental ensembles, things like string quartets, and then two violins, viola and cello, um, or an orchestra, so different sections of instruments where there's strings and woodwind and brass and things like that. If it's a bigger orchestra, it's liable to be a classical orchestra, not a Baroque orchestra. Um, and just making sure you're picking out some of those listening things. Again, making sure you know what your cadences are. And your full, again, that chords and cadences sheet on Edmodo um, is useful. You're again, perfect cadence and plagal being your full stops and imperfect chord one to chord five being your kind of comma and then the interrupted cadence chord five to chord six all that stuff may it might say what is the cadence at the end of this section and you can listen to it and you go oh it sounds a bit like a full stop and then you've got a choice to make is it five one or four one or oh it sounds a bit like a comma and then you go oh yeah that's that's an imperfect cadence that's a that's a chord one to chord five and we're in c major so that's a chord a chord of g to a chord of c and that gets you marks 
okay just that little bit of theory knowledge will get you marks okay next um it's been a long day um we're gonna move on to jazz 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 we've done a little bit on jazz uh, and i did kind of give you quite a lot of um the video stuff on um ed moda recently on to do with jazz so I'm, I'm just kind of recapping jazz really just to kind of tell you the kind of stuff they might ask you um the stuff they might ask you as far as jazz is um they're going to want to potentially know um origins okay so where it came from um they're going to want to know instrumentation they might want some of the very specific keywords that come up with jazz so things like improvisation so where where the instrumentalists are making stuff up um things like imitation so when for example one instrument might imitate another one okay so you have a trumpet part that like goes bam, 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 and then a, a, the you know a, a trombone might go bam, 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 bam. so a little bit of imitation and kind of call and response kind of stuff going on that might ask you stuff to do with that it might ask you to do stuff with 12 bar blues because a lot of jazz focuses on the 12 bar blues um which is 12 bars with chord one 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 four four one one five four one one Okay, so if you're, you know, ding, 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 it's all chord one and it's still chord one, and then it goes to chord four and it goes to chord one and it goes to chord well, so it goes to four, one, 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 five, 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 and two chord four and then one and one and chord one and that's the twelve bar blues and it's kind of boring. Um, so that's twelve bar blues. Okay, they might ask you to do with 12 bar blues. It's like, what chord sequence is this piece based on? And you can kind of go, uh, 12 bar blues. If it sounds jazzy, it's more than likely 12 bar blues. Um, it might want to know instruments. So again, trumpets and saxophones and trombones, and you can get violins and pianos and, and acoustic, again, double basses. Okay, double basses. Don't write bass guitar. It, it, unless you're sure it is one more often than not if they've got a jazz piece they're going to want a double bass okay that's a plucked upright bass um if you write bass guitar sometimes the examiner will actually not accept the not accept it and say no because it's, it's not a bass guitar okay that's like getting electric writing electric guitar if it's like a spanish classical guitar they won't give you a mark for that you need to make sure that you don't just say bass guitar because you know you, you kind of forget um it might ask about um, technique, so it might say improvisation, it might say, if it's a singer, it might be scat, okay, so scat singing, that thing where you have, like, nonsense syllables, like, excuse me about, all that kind of stuff, you know, all that kind of stuff, that's called scat, vocal improvisation and vocal scat. Um, it may, for example, talk um, about things like... Um, where the style of music originated as i said uh it may talk about um the fact that it's not written down it might say how would the players learn this piece of music and you might say oh well it's learned by ear and again indian classical music is often learned by ear as is gamelan okay that's music of an uh, has an oral tradition um music you also know it's music that doesn't that is mainly passed on orally okay by sound by learning by listening um is often not from um kind of from Europe not from Western classical tradition again because jazz is kind of from blues and blues kind of is is kind of a hodgepodge and mix up again including kind of kind of African kind of music from obviously slaves who were taken across to America uh, again slightly generalizing um, but again that that tradition of music was oral it was done it wasn't written down in dots and, and, and treble clef and bass clef it was oral it was passed on by listening as is kind of Indian classical music and as is gamelan so some music is oral tradition it might ask you questions to do with that and I'm not telling you what's on the mock exam i'm just literally kind of saying the stuff that kind of comes on past papers because it's pointless me telling you exactly what's going to come up because that's not going to happen in the real thing this is just giving you a bit of an idea about the kind of stuff that may and just reminding you about some things um okay dance um dancey dance 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 um let me just have a quick look at this um okay um leader i'm just going to quickly focus on whoops daisy i'm knocking that over uh, so leader um leader as we're aware is is 
Germany and Austria. It's a romantic style of music. It is um, from um, a lot of the words for those songs. It's again, a, a, it's a homophonic tune and accompaniment where the piano is quite important. It's not just simple accompaniment. It does some more interesting things. You'll always remember the Earl King as long as you live. That's a great piece of music. Um, <laughs> uh, also, uh, with leader, you want to make sure um, that you are picking up on it might ask you questions about what type of voice um, sometimes it can be men so that's um, baritone tenor and bass with bass being the lowest and then baritone um, and then uh, one second oh no it's still working I thought it would stop working hopefully you're still um, logged in um, so yeah, bass being the lowest, then baritone, which is kind of not quite as high as tenor, but it's not quite as low as bass, and then tenor. So bass, baritone, tenor. If it's a lady who's not ridiculously high, it might be alto. If it is quite high, it might be soprano. So it might ask you the type of voice. Um, but again, we're looking at poems that were written by German and Austrian poets that were then put to music by German and Austrian composers. Um, and we had uh, Schubert, Schumann, Brahms, Beethoven. Okay, so again, names of those composers. Again, I remember Schubrahms and Schubeethoven when we initially did this. But yeah, it's Schubert, Schumann, Brahms and Beethoven did did Lieder. Um, and it was again a very kind of... Um, hey, hey Joe Butterfield, good to see you mate. Um, so yeah, so you want to make sure you kind of remember that. Um, waltz, Era of Study 3, Waltzes. We watch lots of André Rieu. You know how much I love André Rieu. He's my favourite person ever. Uh, I may or may not be lying there. Um, waltzes, 3-4. Three, 3-4. Four. <laughs> three, four. Um, when it says, where is it from? Vienna, not Venice. Okay, it's not. It's difficult because it's a city beginning with V, uh, but waltzes came from Vienna. They didn't come from Venice. Okay, some music came from Venice, but not waltzes. Uh, so you want to know that sometimes if it says, what city is it from? Then, yeah, they, it'll ask the city in waltzes. Some of them ask country. Okay, so again, it's swatted in Vienna. You've got the, um, it's in 3-4. It might ask about like something like, you know, the 3-4 is that like, um, cha, cha, with the first beat being strong. So it's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, um, talk about the chords being simple. Talk about waltzes being, one piece of music might have lots of different waltzes. Waltzes are often like maybe 16 bars long or 32 bars long. And a piece of music would maybe have a 16 bar you know, a waltz, and then a little transition section, and then another 16 bars. Why? Well, because people could dance to the first bit, and it gives people who who missed the beginning of the piece of music chance to kind of get in and do a bit of dancing. Okay, waltz being danced in closed position, waltz being waltz being a ballroom. Whoops, busy. Um, waltz being a ballroom style dance. Um, in closed positions to where they are literally holding each other. Any of you watch Strictly, Strictly Come Dancing, you're going to kind of be aware of a waltz. Uh, and especially a Viennese waltz. Why? Because waltzes were from Vienna. And a Viennese waltz is a, is a traditional style waltz dance. Um, so, that's kind of waltzes. Just be kind of aware. And again, at any point, just remember Andre Ryu. Um, because he's brilliant and awesome, and I love him. Um, indeed. Um so, um, tango. I wanted to go through tango. Again, area study three. Um, it's interesting. Tango is a style of Latin American dance. Again, if you watch Strictly Come Dancing, you can see them do tangos. They have tangos, but then they have the Argentine tango. Okay? Um, because tangos are from Argentina and Uruguay. Um, so, and the Argentine tango is kind of a traditional style tango. OK, um, so you get a traditional style tango um, and that's from Argentina. Um, a few things um, in tango that's important is um, instrumentation. So you get things like what's called like accordions, but they're, all, they're called something like a bandonian. OK, so it's kind of the name of a type of accordion. You might get away with you might get away with accordion. Um, but let me just play you a piece of tango music. Just make sure this runs. That's horrible. 
Okay, so that is a clip of a tango. Okay, now you get a very specific rhythm in this, which is called the habanera rhythm. Okay, which goes dum bum 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 bum. Okay, so you get a very specific rhythm. Okay, which is called the habanera rhythm, which is often played by um, a acoustic bass, but often it can be plucked, but it can also be bowed. Um, the the bass. Um, so there's some specific rhythms with that. Again, tango is a paired dance. Again, um, uh, it's quite a very close. They dance cheek to cheek, okay, as opposed to waltzes where they're in close position. But a tango, they're very, 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 very kind of sensual and kind of sexy dance. Um, uh, so, yeah, so again, you want to make sure you're aware of kind of tango. You want to uh, kind of be aware of kind of some of the instrumentation. You've got kind of, you might have potentially have drums. You might have strings. Again, that version had a violin. Um, you might have a violins, kind of a tango violin. You might have this uh, bandonian, um, so this kind of um, accordion um, instrument. Um, and again, double bass. You might, for example, have you could have a you know, again guitars as well. You are definitely likely to have guitars, potentially almost kind of slightly Spanish style playing guitars. But again, because Latin America um, and kind of Spain are kind of kind of slightly linked to instrumentation. Obviously, uh, whilst the Europeans went to North America, obviously the Spanish settled South America. So there's quite a lot of Spanish influence, Spanish and Portuguese influences in South America. So what's why some of the instrumentation in tango and stuff like that is slightly kind of spanishy but tango is not from spain not from spain it's from argentina um so let me just quickly check a couple of things I'm just making sure i stay up to date with all my stuff we've got about half an hour remaining and again please ask any questions if you've got any questions folks do do, do ask away um so with all areas of study three They'll ask you where the style of dance originated. They might ask you what each style it is. So they want you to identify it, where it comes from. It might therefore say, um, identify features in this music which make it sound a certain way. Tangos are quite dramatic. So they might want to know what it is about it which sounds dramatic. Obviously the habanero rhythm makes it sound dramatic. The kind of specific kind of rhythms make it sound dramatic. And again, that habanero of like, bum, 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 bum. Bum 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 is a, is a big one. Uh, again, um, normally tango seem to be minor in key. They're normally the minor key. Um, bum 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 kind of minor keyed. Um, the tempo is relatively quick actually in, in in a tango. You might get questions about tempo. Um, you probably you could get asked questions about cadences um, in in tango. Um, and in area study three in general, so waltz and tango and salsa and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, just be kind of aware that you want to know your keywords and stuff, but you just also want to be aware that you might get asked these kind of music theory kind of questions as well. Um, mm, looking through, what did I say I'd go on to next? Just look at Edmodo. Oh, dear me. Okie dokie, let's just have a quick check. Uh -huh. Year 11 GCC Music. Just checking what I've said I'll go through. I don't want to leave anything out. So we've done classical chair, we've done jazz, we've done lead, we've done Indian classical, we've done gamelan, we've done waltz, we've done tango, we've done club dance. Ah, Bangra. Yes. Bangra is awesome. Again, you will not, um, you, you won't mistake Bangra for something else. Okay, you, you, you really won't mistake it for anything else. It is very specific. Galisoni <laughs> 
के दारू पी 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 के जट मुक्त दे That's an example of some Bangra. Now, Bangra, um, you won't really mistake. Uh, the massive issue people have with Bangra is that they always get it wrong where it originates. Okay? Um, it does not originate from India. Okay? It does not originate from India or Pakistan or Bangladesh. It is a type of music from Britain, from the UK, okay? It was originally from Punjab, okay? Um, um, in northern India and Pakistan, okay? So it originally, it was a folk dance that farmers did, okay? That's where it initially came from, but it was a type of fusion music where the... Um, where the uh, people who moved into this country um, therefore combined club dance music from the 80s, kind of 80s and 90s, and they combined it with the traditional rhythms and instruments of their type of Punjabi kind of folk dance. Okay, uh, you have some very, but again, hopefully you should tell it's not club dance. Don't mistake it because it has a synthesized drum beat for club dance. It ain't club dance. Okay, hopefully if there's an Indian, there's an Indian person singing and it's got that specific rhythm. Um, so the dun 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 what kind of instruments is being used so you need to make sure that you um, remember the note the the word chal which is the most popular rhythm it says in here in the cgp for modern banger is the chal so that's the one that goes dun 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 that's the kind of predominant rhythm you get okay um the uh, club dance, so it's a fusion, so you've got club dance stuff, synthesizers, but you've also potentially got um, some kind of other kind of Indian instruments, okay? Um, potentially kind of things that like, you know, sitars and things like, not sitars, but um, those kind of like string instruments. You also get a thing called a doll, a doll, okay? D-H-O-L, which is a double-headed drum, okay? That's the bit that goes, dun, 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 and then that does the same kind of rhythm, um, to get that specific kind of bangra rhythm going. Um, the instrument, again, it says the key instrument is the doll, double headed barrel shaped drum. Each drum has a different sound. One is low, one is higher. Okay, dum, dum, dum. So ding, dong, ding, dong. And they hit them both, and that gives a very specific sound to bangra. And you can hear it, you can kind of tell it, you can tell what's going on with it. Um, hopefully, you're still with me. Um, so, um, let me just have a look at this information. Uh, lots of repetition, okay? Um, lots and lots and lots of repetition with, with Bangra music. Let me just try and find... Um, uh, piece I want. to find the name of this piece one second I'm just going to quickly go into here and find the name this is the one Yeah, you get that rhythm.
Okay, so that is a piece of music by a group called Punjabi MC. Um, again, Bangri uses music technology because it's got they've they remix songs. So that one was remixed with an 80s tune for, called Night Rider. Um, and again, they use samples and they remix other people's tunes and they add those specific instruments over the top. Um, again, those specific kind of things and those specific child rhythm. Um, and again, often you'll get um, a kind of uh, vocalist um, kind of uh, singing lyrics and stuff. And again, it's not from India or Pakistan. It's from Britain because it was formed around Birmingham. Um in the 70s and 80s and then got more popular in the 90s and 2000s um, and had quite a lot there was a few hits in the main charts as well very good to dance to and again it's not a pair dance it's one of those kind of you know in the club kind of dances um, so again just be aware of Bangra um, for example sometimes instead of the, the doll the drum they use drum machines you might get a more modern piece of Bangra but again it's going to have that specific dun -dun 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 kind of rhythm going on so it's just important that you pick up on that um so yes uh what have i said next uh, we're close to it actually uh so um who have i still got whoever i've got just a, a comment um so i know who i've still got at the moment and if you've got any specific questions um and i'll do another few bits and bobs as well because we've got a little bit of time so i want to make sure i'm covering all the stuff for you people who've tuned in and stayed with me um because i'm mindful that those of you who have who've been sat there for a while you might have some questions that i don't want to make sure i'm not kind of covering certain things a couple of bits and bobs um while I'm just waiting for questions to come through, I think there's a little bit of a, uh, a, a gap in time. Um, a couple of things with 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 this with this uh, mock exam. Um, oh, hey, Charlotte Bowes. Um, will be um, not to get downhearted if you get a question and you can't answer it. Okay. You, it's going to take a little bit of practice, and we have got a lot. If you've looked at the timetable, we have got a lot of 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 um additional sessions kind of planned and there's lots of stuff so you're going to get more in-depth sessions to do with pretty much all these areas of study uh, you're going to get in-depth sessions on all of them um so you don't need to if you don't get a, if you don't have no answer for a question then that just means that we can we can therefore oh hi mr warren good to see you mate um if we don't get an answer, if we don't know an answer, then that's fine. That's not an issue at this stage. Uh, we just want to make sure we know it by the time we get to June the 9th, when your exam is. So that means if you don't know something, and if everyone generally doesn't get an answer right, then I can go, okay, we don't really get the difference between homophonic and polyphonic, so we can do some work on it. Or we can say, okay, well, we've covered gamelan, but we didn't really pick up on some of these notes, these words, so we'll go through it again. Or, okay, well, we've focused on leader, but people mistook it, or people mistook Indian classical music for Bangra, or vice versa versa so we'd go through a little bit of that so if you're not sure on something you just need to make sure um, that you don't let it get to you in the mock exam because you you don't want it to get to you in the real exam either if you don't and something will come up and you'll go and you'll go I don't know yeah if you knew every answer to the question everyone would get a hundred out of a hundred and that obviously doesn't happen um, so therefore you just need to do your best and not worry too much make sure you read the questions a lot of the time you'll be stressed and you won't read the questions properly you'll go through and you'll go okay yeah cool i'm um you know i know all the stuff that's happening here i'm, I'm fine and then you'll just miss it and you'll not read the question properly and i'd say that most people probably end up losing three or four marks because they haven't properly read the question and properly really figured out what it wants you to at what you want you to answer and a lot of the times you can actually help yourself by really reading the question properly uh the lady there's a lady on the actual paper who reads the questions out to you so actually she reads them but you really need to look through the questions and really look at the wording of it because it will give you an idea about what they want you to put and if you if you if you read it a little bit wrong and you put the wrong answer down you could have got that right and one mark two marks three marks four marks can make the difference between one grade and another so don't worry but just try and do your best um 
it might give you um, some stuff to do with musical notes. So you want to remember that in treble clef, uh, yeah, the exam is 90 minutes, Ben. Yeah, it's a 90 minute exam. The actual exam that you've got, I think this one lasts 62 minutes. Uh, but with the beginning and the ending and the weights and stuff, you'll probably be in there about 75. So about an hour and 15 minutes. It varies each year based on the length of the extracts. But this one's not a particularly long one. But officially, it's an hour and a half exam. But you will probably be done within about 75 minutes. So it's not ridiculously long uh, but because it's not ridiculously long you need to make sure that you pick up marks pretty quickly there's a hundred marks um, and if you want to if again the official thing if you want to see you need to be hitting about 60 marks out of a hundred for a C okay um, which isn't easy but at the same point there's lots of simple marks that you can pick up um, and there's lots of silly marks that you can throw away if you don't read questions properly and you don't if you don't do simple some simple things um, So knowing your knowing some theory stuff Okay is important knowing your chords and cadences and the chords and cadences sheet is there being able to pick up on stuff And we're gonna do quite a bit of work on melodic dictation because that's something that I know that some of you will struggle at initially uh, And again have struggled at when we attempted to kind of do stuff like that, but we'll have some we'll go through that um, the only question which marks your spelling and punctuation and grammar um, will be question three, um, which is the one that's a, it's a, that's, a, that's a 10 marker, which is, again, asks you to, to, dis to describe how a piece of music is de describing something. Um, so it'll say, why, you know, why is it doing what it's doing? And it will want you to write in paragraphs and sentences. The rest of everything else can be pretty much... Um, pretty much just bullet pointed or just one like very simple answers uh, there is only one of them Ben there's only one long description questions that's just the one uh, everything else is relatively short snappy answers um, at most like a line or so for example there's a I won't give you exact but again it just says in this here describe the accompaniment in bars one to eight it's a two mark question it gives you three lines so again it would just be um, just be a simple musical description of what you hear um, and again no there's that one 10 mark question out of a hundred so 10 there's 10 percent of the mark is that is that descriptive kind of writing answer the rest of it does not require you to be great as far as like punctuation and grammar it's law looking for your ability to pick out things musically um, so yes um, it might ask you period of composition it might ask you year of composition. Just know Baroque 1600, 1750, uh, classical 1750, 1820, romantic 1820 to 1900. Anything after 1900 is 20th century. Um, so it might ask you that. So if you think it's kind of classical, just remember put put a year in the middle of 1750 to 1820, it's like 1770 or 1780, and you'll generally be okay. And if it's if it's Baroque, you might as well put something like. 1680 or 1700 for example kind of sticking it about that is generally not too bad if that's what you think it is <coughs> um, I think I'm looking through the paper here um, you might get uh, one where there's grids okay and in fact I'm looking at one here where you get it says using the grid below give differences differences and or similarities uh, and then it goes through things like tempo, bass line, number of instruments playing. So you get two extracts, yeah, extract A and extract B. And then it wants you to describe the differences and similarities. Okay. And again, you must look how many marks you get. Because this one I'm re looking at here says tempo has a box and there's two marks. Then it says bass line is four marks. Number of instruments playing two marks so there's obviously more going on with the baseline between the two extracts so there's a four mark question so if there's four marks you want to get at least four points down okay if not try and get maybe five points down just in case one of your points is wrong so look at the amount of marks that a question has got for it that will tell you what you need to write down and how much you need to write down there is no point at the end of the exam you always have a couple of minutes at the end of the exam I know you'll want to get out of there yeah, I know you want to leave the hall and be get, and have a break and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you want to make sure when it says you want to go through, you, you have five minutes or so to look at your paper. Any blank things, yeah, any blank boxes, guess. Put a guess in. Yeah, if it says what's the instrument and you weren't sure, guess something. You can't lose marks for guessing. Okay, you might pick up one or two marks. One or two marks is, is a grade. Okay, pretty much it's half a grade. Okay, it's, you know, you may as well. You're not going to lose anything. 
okay? Um, so yeah, don't try and not leave many blank boxes. Okay. If you're not sure on something, write something down, maybe, but then again, think about it, come back to it if you need to change the answer, but don't, don't leave it blank. There's no point leaving it blank, but don't sit there for five minutes thinking about something and miss the next fifth, like 10 marks because you're sitting there trying to get a one marker. Yeah. Don't worry about losing one mark. If there's a one mark question that you're not sure of and there's a six mark question that you're looking at, do the six mark question. Don't worry about the one mark question as much. Look where the majority of your marks are. Pick up easy marks. If it's multiple choice, get them done. Get them done quick. Never leave a multiple choice blank. Because there's apps, you know, you've got a one in three or a one in four chance of getting a mark. Yeah, which is which is a pretty good, pretty good odds if you use a little bit of a, a bit of nous and a bit of brain power. Um so, um I've just looked through that paper and again it's 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 not too bad. Okay, it's not easy because the whole point of this is I want to identify things that you're not so good on as opposed to looking at things that you are good at. Because if I give you one that is covers everything we've covered and that you're really confident on, you're going to rock it. You're going to think, yeah, A, great, know all this, brilliant, I'm going to get an A. Yeah, and you might get an A, but you really need to make sure we're focusing on what you don't know because we need to work on your weaknesses as well as keep your strengths. Okay, so if you know loads about pop ballads because you know what pop ballads are, and we did quite a bit on leader, and we've done stuff on classical, some classical music and stuff, but that's great. But we need to focus on those ones we haven't spent as much time on, or the ones we haven't um, completely covered yet. Uh, we are going to cover them, but we might as well pick them up in an exam. Because if you don't know something about a style of music and you can still pick out five or six marks out of ten. That also means that when you've revised and when you've learned fully about that style of music, you want, might want to pick out eight, eight, nine marks out of ten. Okay? Because a lot of the marks you don't need to know about the, the actual style of music. You just need to be able to pick out instrumentation and tempo and texture and all those things from a style of music. Okay? Um, so yeah, if you have any questions, do do jump in guys if you have if you have questions. It's out of a hundred marks. Uh, the paper um, and again like I said about 60 and again my general thought is if you get uh, if you can get 60 or above that is really really good okay if you can get 60 marks or above that is really positive considering the paper and what what's what's on it um, and again we are going to have time to improve we're going to have time to work we're going to have time to go through this um, I'm just going to use the next bit of this tutorial to actually just go through a little bit of the stuff um, that I'm planning for you and kind of when and when and where it may be um, and what are we what are we at the moment we are an hour and a half into officially into this pod into this webcast okie dokie uh, okay six people watching now okay there's some of you still here how long are the pieces of music Charlotte okay um, they can vary from about 30 seconds to up to a minute but they won't be long they won't be whole pieces of music they'll be extracts so it might be a 30 second extract okay and that'll be it and it'll play it maybe three four times okay um so i will give you an example it might say uh, there we go it might give you this Come on, Spotify. So that might be an extract, okay? It might want you to identify what style of music that is. Hopefully, you picked up when the strings started coming in and the, um, and, the, and, the and the other instruments that that was a piece that was a tango. That was the introduction of a tango, and that was a that was a 35 second clip, okay? So you'll get a clip maybe that long, and you'll have to kind of pick up on the things from that clip, and then it'll play you it again, and it'll say, you know, extract A for the second time.
and then you go through it all again and you might have four or five different little questions to answer um, and yeah and that's it now often sometimes you want to wait till it gets going in order to write down what style of music it is that one isn't really nice you can't tell it's tango until it properly gets going until that specific habanero rhythm comes in <coughs> so here kind of guessing you're not 100% sure but as soon as bam da 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 and then you're fine okay as soon as that comes in you're like hey that's the habanero rhythm it's a tango hurrah and yes it is tango sha um so yeah um so yeah so you'll get maybe 30 30 seconds it might be up to a minute but it might be slightly less it might be slightly more but you won't get huge amounts you'll never get a whole piece of music um so just gonna if you've got any other questions do do chuck them up there i'm just going to quickly go through another few things i'm going to be doing um with you so obviously we've had this kind of mock exam prep now the online stuff um there's going to be um on uh, where are we yes so obviously tomorrow you've got an exam um uh, i have um a session uh tomorrow lunchtime with rachel robinson uh tomorrow after school i'm going through a creative task practice so going through some stuff with creative tasks so if you want some help on creative tasks which is happening after easter uh then come along to that and we'll start going through that i might even give you a little bit of a of a practice past paper um how many questions ah it varies charlotte um uh i'll give you an example um in this one the first extract there are one two three four first ex the first question one a has four parts one b one two three four five has six parts and one c has one two parts okay but with one of them being a four marker Okay, for, for like a like a four point thing, so you might get like three, four, five questions per extract. Okay, but some of those, if you have maybe three, then a couple of those might be two or three markers, so you have to get two or three points to do with it. So one of them says, um, what question here says, suggest three ways in which technology has been used in the performance of this piece. Um, yes, and they want three, so it's a three marker, but it's one question, but it's got a three marker. Um, yeah um the, b, 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 b. oh right okay thanks ben um wow is the english exam i thought the english exam was in the morning that's uh is it going on that long because this is a lunchtime session <laughs> who knows um let's see how that goes fingers crossed you can make it um so creative task practice after school tomorrow and then on sunday this sunday uh, between one o'clock and four o'clock i'm going to do a composition q a um so i'll be doing a composition q a and i might kind of go through some bits and bobs maybe even some of the previous compositions that students have done and i'll let you know what marks they got and kind of why they got the marks they got and what you might want to add in your compositions uh to kind of pick up some relatively easy marks so it's not one-to-one -one sessions but it does give you a little bit of an idea on the kind of stuff you should be looking at adding to your compositions uh oh maths is 8 45 english is 11 30 okay she might miss that then uh it's two hours later so math and english and then so yeah 1 30 you'll finish is i'm assuming it's a two hour english exam so that'll be 1 30 so she might be a bit frazzled by two after two exams so yeah well if she doesn't make it we'll try and find another time excellent okay so yeah so we've got composition line then we've got a with the composition theory q a next tuesday um from 8 till 10 30 next tuesday evening again now that's to do with composition um uh yeah so that's to do with composition uh but it's also to do with theory so that's slightly to do with the kind of theoretical stuff that you should be adding into your composition that's probably also for those of you who are looking at trying to get a's and a stars in your composition and trying to push for those really high grades useful for all of you um but yeah so that's kind of it'd be useful for you to kind of tune in for that because it might be for example to say like you need to try and get a modulation in there you know how you might look at doing that how's the easy way of getting modulations in you might want to use some more interesting chords and where are the chords to look at um and again it, when it says q a i'll be talking but again as there's questions it'll be useful i can you can kind of um 
move me in the direction you want me um, as far as questions and answers uh, and then we hit obviously into the Easter holidays and again we've got those creative task master classes and Q&A's across the Thursday the 13th and Thursday the 20th and you've got 12 hours of online stuff in four set in four different sessions um, so you've got a lot of time in creative task which is also going to be really useful for composition because I'm going to be going through and doing a few different bits and bobs and kind of showing you the process showing you kind of how I how I kind of do things and how I would say is the best way for you to do things uh, to make quick decisions creative task is all about quick decisions it's all about saying I'm going to make this quick decision. I need to make my decision. What's my chord sequence? What am I doing with the lyrics? What am I doing with this? What am I doing with that? Make a decision, make a decision, make a decision, make a decision and move on because you've got 45 minutes of actual time of composition and that is not very long. So you need to make very quick decisions and make quick action to kind of max out your marks on creative task. And the kind of process that I used last year with students had a big impact and again grades went up really uh, quite kind of quite well from the previous year um, so again but you need to come having ideas okay but knowing that you won't know the brief until you get there and you'll have one of six briefs you won't know what it is until it gets there but as I said if, if you're thinking you're going to choose the chords okay like the chord sequence you might want to come with a couple of styles of music chosen and know those styles of music okay um, and yes, you can do a cappella for a creative task. Uh, you can do a cappella if there's a set of lyrics. You can do a cappella without any shadow of a doubt. Okay. Um, um, so yes, that's no issues at all. Um, so yeah, you can do anything you want for creative task. Um, you don't have to use the computers. But as I said previously, people who've chosen not to use Cubase, who weren't also really good at improvising on the instrument generally got quite a lot lower mark than those who use Cubase and actually then did a usual kind of layering and composition task because again Cubase can do things a lot quicker uh, and Cubase will play exactly what you've told it to play and it does Cubase doesn't get nervous Cubase just plays things in time and Cubase does things correctly uh, so you just need to make sure that you're kind of listening to those sessions and, and, and going with that and yeah you should be okay um, we are almost at time, I think, folks. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, as I said the other day, we have a significant amount of online sessions. I mean, when I've kind of been chatting and stuff like that, to people are kind of saying how many hours of online sessions and how many hours of additional kind of support and stuff. I mean, what have we got? Online sessions, yeah, it's 44 hours. So I'm going to do 44 hours of, of streaming. Okay, for, for you guys, um, you know, listening, for example, just streaming specifically to do the listening test is 18 hours. So this has been two. Okay, you've got 18 hours to go. And I'm literally going to go through all the different areas of study, give you kind of listening things, go through. And again, going through, giving you some kind of listening. Um, again, and I can set up a Spotify listening playlist and stuff like that. All kind of good, kind of good stuff. Again, you've got quite a lot of stuff from creative tasks. You've got 12 hours on creative tasks. You've still got, you've got, again, you've got, again, you've got about for five hours of the kind of stuff you're going to be looking at with the written work, the little bit of written stuff that you've got to do how to tweak your composition how to kind of actually look into getting as much out of your composition out of it as you can um, and then you've got lunchtime sessions and stuff okay you've got lunchtime and after school sessions uh, lunchtime sessions at the moment is nine and a half hours um, of, of, of lunchtime sessions and after school there's another 24 hours there and this is all between now and the and the 9th of June um, so again we've got a lot of time given across and again a lot of that um, um, especially when we get um, after uh, uh, on next th next Thursday and then after Easter is after school sessions on Tuesday and Thursday will be composition so it'll be I'll me and hopefully me and Mr Warren will be in D8 sitting there helping everybody anybody who comes helping you with composition helping you get everything sorted helping you get as many marks as possible giving you feedback asking you to upload things in Edmodo so we can give um, feedback and again upload things on Edmodo okay upload stuff there and I will I will have a listen um, 
again I've got as you're probably aware of with given this amount of time online and stuff like that I only have as many hours in the, as in the day has um, but I will give the hours I can okay and I will look at your work and I'll, I'll help you out and I'll give you comments and, and, and kind of ways you can improve uh, and we'll do that but again I think I said an email to your folks the other day you just need to make sure you're putting uh, putting a, a similar amount of legwork and effort in as I am uh, and then you'll be fine because um, in the end of the day you kind of get what you put in really in this course you just need to make sure that you're you're not being helpless and you're not kind of thinking oh I can't do it it's too hard you don't know unless you try and we're not going to let you we're not going to let you fail okay we're not going to kind of you know let you sit there and basically just kind of fail and not do anything about it um, we'll help you as much as we possibly can help you um, and make sure that you kind of go away knowing that you've done as well as you can do uh, but as long as you put the work in outside of school and outside of these sessions as you as you can because I'm aware that you're not all going to be able to tune in for for like you know or go to the all the 88 hours of support I'm doing it so that everybody can get enough support regardless of their timetables and, 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 and what they're doing um, but again yeah you still need to be revising you still need to be going through your CGP you still need to be putting stuff um, together um, at home and thinking okay doing some draft of your written work sending it through to me um, me and Mr Warren so we can have a look at it um, you know start ticking off those boxes okay we're gonna have some little tick sheets soon so you can start ticking off what you have and haven't done um, as you get it completed and we'll start inputting some of these grades so you can get an idea about how you're doing uh, and again what kind of targets you need to set yourself for the listening test to get the grade you want um, and we'll be going through that um, it's one minute past 11 uh, so I'm probably going to um, make a move um, if you have any questions if you need anything please come and see me um, make sure that you are making as many of these sessions as you can it's really important to me that you're you're accessing that again it's, it's nice to know that at the moment I've got eight people <laughs> Uh, watching I'm, I'm assuming that some of those people are music students um, <laughs> I'm hoping they are if you don't study music at Lutworth College I'm not quite sure why you're watching at the moment because it's not much use to you um, but yeah I'm glad I'm glad you kind of tuned in those of you who have hopefully you found it relatively useful um, and again uh, if you'd like me to focus on anything specific in future sessions do let me know and I will do what I can um, but yeah, that's me, folks, and I will uh, see you tomorrow. Good luck in your maths exam in the morning, um, and yeah, I will hopefully see you soon, and uh, I will see you also good luck on your mock on Friday. So make sure you're revising and putting your work in. Night-night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.